Hello everyone, my name is James Joan. I am a master's student at University College of London working under PhD student Max Hort and Professor Federico Saro as part of the Solar Research Group. Today I would like to present to you PyDesai, a genetic improvement tool to speed up Python. We all know Python as a general purpose programming language used by a variety of developers, ranging from non-experts to advanced programmers. Nowadays, it is popular in several application domains due to its ease of use, dynamic typing, and wide range of custom libraries. Its design philosophy focuses on simplicity and versatility, which allows it to be utilized for rapid development. However, its interpreted nature causes runtimes to be substantially slower compared to a compiled language such as C, which in contrast suffers from a limited library and more difficult syntax, but has fast execution speeds. The goal of this project is to combine the advantage of the fast development of Python with the fast execution speed of C or C++. For some context, Cython is a Python interpreter that helps bring Python and C closer together. It is an extension to Python, meaning that any Python code is also valid Cython code. But Cython also allows for additional C-inspired constructs, such as static typing for performance improvements. For a developer, the process of converting a Python file to a Cython file first involves changing the file type to a .pyx file, followed by adding various Cython constructs before finally compiling it to a C or C++ file to use. If we focus on the second step here, to maximize the performance improvements that Cython can bring, developers need to know how to efficiently add the extra constructs manually. Here we can look at an example of adding static typing to Cython code. The cdef keyword is used to indicate the C syntax being used. This can clearly be easily uh, done manually in this case, but is a lot more tedious for beginners to C or Cython, and especially becomes time consuming when working with larger and more complex programs. We therefore introduce Py to Sci as an automatic conversion tool between Python and Cython to alleviate the manual effort required by developers and investigate the feasibility of improving runtime with this tool. PyDesai's main architecture is so far shown here, taking inspiration from designs in both the Piggy and Gen frameworks, where each patch is a sequence of edits made to a target program and can be performed with an exhaustive, random, or local search. The design is made to be simple and extendable. The tool starts with a conversion from a Python script into a Cython AST. Then a patch is chosen by the search algorithm to apply, where each patch is made up a list of type insertions made to the Python file. When a patch is applied, each edit in the patch is performed on a new copy of the target program and returns a modified copy version instead of manipulating the original target program. This allows edits to be separately evaluated without affecting the original file. Then after the patch is applied, the AST is converted into Cython code. The code is then compiled dynamically and run against user-defined tests to ensure that the functionality is unchanged. The runtime is then obtained and compared to the next patch. In order to edit the Cython code, a Cython abstract syntax tree is used as the intermediate representation. The AST is not yet intended for official public usage as of now, and so we have to implement some custom APIs to perform the necessary edits. We can see from the AST that each construct that can be typed has a base type node, which are the ones we are concerned with. The scope can also be identified by a scope node, which can either be the module node you can see on line one or the stat list nodes on line two and 10. Before the search is performed, the Python files are first pre-processed by visiting each scope and finding the base type nodes to identify the modification points to go through. We'll now look into the experiments to show the validity of PyTosci. The program we test, uh, we aim to have two properties. Firstly, it had to be verifiable, uh, where there needs to be at least one test case uh, to ensure we did not cause any errors. And secondly, to take from an existing source code to um, see its effect on functional code. We chose Project Euler, a collection of mathematical coding challenges to test small snippets of code. We will present the simple experiment we did for calculating the nth Fibonacci number. Since the program is small, an exhaustive search for um, the program is feasible, 
and in this case performing a local search or random walk was unnecessary. Here we can look at an example of a single patch applied to a target file during the search. In this case, the test would obviously result in a compilation error due to the um, char data type being incorrectly used when it should be a uh, integer on line 4. Another scenario would be successfully compiling the code but calculating an incorrect value, which in this case is due to an integer uh, overflow because n is large. This case in particular highlights the mistakes a novice developer would make when inserting the types manually and can also be the result given when a static type inference tool is used instead. Finally, here's a snippet of the successful code being shown at the end of the run with the optimal type insertions. If we look at the results, overall we can see from the metric tables that a large proportion of the patch evaluations result to incorrect values. This is mainly due to integer overflows or precision errors. And this explains why the results in the exhaustive search for finding the 75th Fibonacci number contains 89 more incorrect values than the 25th. Additionally, a smaller but significant portion of the evaluations also contain compilation errors. And these were largely consisted of incompatible data type errors found in both static and compiled time. Ideally, if the user running the program could identify certain types that would um, definitely not be used in the program, such as a char or bool data type, they could remove these from the insertion type list initially to reduce the number of possible compilation errors and incorrect values. And this would uh, drastically improve the efficiency of the search algorithm. The figure uh, here illustrates a log box plot of 30 repeated runtime measurements for each optimal patch found by the scripts and compares them to an untyped Cython and pure Python version. We can see that by just changing the code to Cython, it is sped up slightly. Uh, the average runtime obtained for optimally typed Cython for n when it's 25 is 4.5 times faster than its Python equivalent. And for when n is 75, type Cython was shown to be faster by a factor of 18, showing that the increase in speed was um, more apparent when the program was more computationally expensive. I'll now show a live demo of the tool working on a Fibonacci program.